Listen, you shining bright like a diamond today, I see. Oh, my goodness. When I tell you, it's like, you know, sometimes the clothes give you this uh, energy. And Willie Sinclair the third from the Milwaukee Sinclairs and uh, his assistant, Chanel, they got this dress and they put the shoes on. And literally, as soon as I put it on, I was like, click three, three. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally. Oh, my gosh. So, thank you, Willie Sinclair III. He is doing it up with these dresses. Um, you know, so, <laughs> it, I'm gonna get right to this, because I was reading this, and I felt bad. Madonna had a mishap in concert this weekend. Oh, she looks so lovely. She is 65 years old. She's been on tour. Yes, looking good. And she has been on tour since October. So every night in the show, Madonna sits in a chair and her dancer tilts it back and he drags her across the stage. So over the weekend, the dancer stumbled <laughs> and they both tumbled to the floor. Okay, so now Madonna look at her, she laughed it off, she seemed to have laughed it off and she got back up. So it's like, you know, it's like when you fall down the stairs in front of a bunch of people and you lay there for a minute, you, you, you assess what's going on in your body and then you get up and you laugh it off. So she's doing everything she's supposed to be doing because you don't want anybody, you know, you, you're embarrassed, you get up, you know. And there's the thing about when you're performing, you get this superhuman, like, laser focus. So you're able to keep going. She kept going with the concert. But I'm telling you, I know Madonna, when she got back to the hotel room, her leg was broken in seven places. <laughs> I'm... I, I know, you know what, because here's the thing. Yes, you 65, and yes, you don't know you don't, you don't look like it, and yes, you have energy, but your body's still 65. <laughs> um, it's just some stuff that it just happens, and when you fall, bones is brittle, and all of that stuff, and hips be hurting, and you ever been sitting there, like, when you, you chained in the sheets, and you go like this, and that neck... <laughs> Something just pulls in your body. You don't know. I start blinking weird. You know, you lift up your hand and you're like, wait, I can't get my hand back there. It's just stuff that happens. But being on that stage, uh, you know, as an entertainer, you push through the pain because you got all that adrenaline that is carrying you. So I feel bad for Madonna, but I feel bad for that dancer too. I do. You know, Madonna seemed cool about it, but I know that dancer heard about that backstage. <laughs> Because I don't know if anybody of y'all remember when Beyonce's crew members didn't get her off that horse fast enough, and, and Beyonce, they caught that side eye real quick from Beyonce, we ain't seen or heard from them crew members anymore. <laughs> All we saw was two T-shirts that said crew floating across the parking lot. <laughs> So Madonna, I'm looking at Madonna's dancer. He didn't even look back. He just dropped her. And he, he dropped her and he, look at he, he fell and then he got up and he kept going. He was like, look, I'm gonna keep going. He, like, like he didn't even, he fell, he got up. He didn't even say, get, let's get back on the chair. He took the chair. He was like, this is the way it's supposed to feel with nobody in there. 
I said, you know what? He took that chair right off the stage to the unemployment line, because he knew. <laughs> oh, my God. I feel like, I feel like Madonna's in that chair going, where you going? <laughs> But I said, Madonna, you know, you should have seen this coming, though, because that looked like the same dancer. So a dancer had stepped on her cape and made her fall in one thing, and she fell. Look, I don't know if that's the same dancer, but here's the thing. Madonna, you got this dancer. You wearing high heels, he's wearing high heels, <laughs> running in heels, okay? <laughs> it's like, and I feel bad, because everybody knows when you on stage, you're gonna be running nowhere in heels. Taylor Swift not running in her heels. Beyonce not running in her heels. Not only was he running in heels, he carrying you too. So he's dragging, he's dragging you. You supposed to have him in some Timberland work boots, okay? He, you can't be running in heels. We gotta have some, so this dancer has to dance for four hours in the heels. I can, look, for me, I can barely run up the steps of heels, let alone pull another person. You see, when I come out, I immediately go, John, you better take me. <laughs> Cause I'm always an accident waiting to happen. But Madonna, I'm glad that you pushed through, mama. Go home, ice your knees down. And girl, Lady, you doing it. Get back on that stage, because my cousin's bought two tickets for your next city. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Now, y'all, the BAFTA Awards had an unwanted surprise guest this weekend. Oppenheimer won Best Film. So when the cast and the crew went up to accept the award, a social media prankster found his way onto the stage, okay? So as the producer gave the acceptance speech, the prankster followed and awkwardly stood behind them. Now, we got this arrow, but we didn't need this daggone arrow, because one of these things... <laughs> to say, one of these things look like they did not work on Oppenheimer, all right? <laughs> so now the producers, they played it cool, but you can tell they were so confused. And BAFTA, <laughs> the security removed him immediately afterwards. Okay, let me tell you something. I don't like this. Let me tell you something. If we had won, John, for best talk show and somebody stood up there behind us, I would literally turn around and be like, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> And not even that, not even that. I'd have put a curse word in there. I'd have been like, who the hell are you? <laughs> I'd have been sitting there going, uh, stop the clock, stop the clock. I'm not talking no more until he gets off the stage. I'm not leaving. You, you're not gonna clown around on my time. You know, it's one thing to run around, uh, run across that stage naked. You there and you gone. But you, you just gonna stand there behind me as I'm giving the speech? This is the kind of stuff that I don't appreciate about these doggone pranksters. Because these people, first of all, they didn't know who he was. They didn't know if he was crazy or not. Uh, I don't like those kind of jokes when I see people do that. Because this cast, Oppenheimer, they worked the butts off. They did an entire campaign to get to that stage. They finally get on stage, and now the ladies gotta keep looking back going, who is this person? So I'm sitting here, I'm going, I don't hear, I, she didn't get to thank a mama. She didn't get to thank a Lord and Savior. She didn't thank nobody, cause she looking at you. So it took away, it's disrespectful, cause it took away from their speech. Let me be standing on that stage and we won. I'll be like, Marco, John, somebody. <laughs> somebody, and Marco, you see how strong he is? He wanted to be a pro wrestler. You better pro wrestle. You better pro wrestle. <clears throat> That's what I'm talking about. <clears throat> I mean, y'all see him flexing his muscles. Y'all think it's cute. Them, them muscles will kill you, flexing. <laughs> Shoot. So, you, and I don't know if y'all remember when the, when the man, Dave Chappelle, was on stage and the man ran on stage and was trying to attack Dave Chappelle, all those comedians jumped in and helped Dave. Even 61-year-old John Stewart jumped in. <laughs> and you know it, he smelled just like Ben Gay jumping on that man. <laughs> Friggin', you better. So I'm like, yeah, you got too many, you got team members, but I, you know, these are Oppenheimer producers. They produce, they don't, they don't fight at all. So I understand that. But these influencers and y'all YouTubers, you going too far with these pranks. You can't play with everybody because you are going to get hurt. It's, you get behind the wrong one. You stand behind me and see if you don't get a BAFTA in the BAFTA your stomach, okay? <laughs> you would have learned that day.
<laughs> but y'all, oh my goodness. I want to send some love to my friend and comedian, Coco Brown. Because over the weekend, Coco, who's been in my laugh lounge with me, her house burned down in a, in a devastating fire. And she only had time to grab her son, Phoenix, the two dogs, and her purse. And they were able to escape the fire, but she lost everything. Her home was destroyed. And so, you know, she's our sister in comedy and a friend and a single mother. And yesterday, Kim Whitley and I, we did a, a special podcast of Two Funny Mamas. We did a live stream to help her raise money. And I want to say this, not to, to give us a pat on the back, but I want to thank our fans and followers of Two Funny Mamas because, because of them, we raised $11,000 to help rebuild Coco's life. Um, and, and, and a lot of people say uh, to celebrities, well, why y'all got the money, why don't you do it? And we did. Kim and I personally contributed to Coco. But I think that when, when you know, we were able to use our platform and people gave from their hearts. And there's a, a, a scripture in the Bible that says, when you give, it's given back to you. And I think when celebrities use, use their platform to ask you to help, it does something. It opens up that part of your heart of joy to be able to help, to be able to invest in someone else's life. So yeah. Celebrities, get, you know, you could say take care of it yourself. But the reason why we ask is so you can feel the joy of also helping someone, because we all could be in this situation. So um, I'm so thankful. That's a special shout out to our fans and followers who are watching, who just gave $5, $10. It added up to $11,000. And if you want to give anything from your heart to help Coco, a fellow single mother, she works 24 seven to take care of her son, Phoenix. And then right now she's in a place where she can't go on the road. She can't, she's just devastated. So y'all, if you want to help Coco Brown, please go to SherryShowTV.com and anything you get from your heart to help would be so absolutely amazing. We love you, Coco. Uh, and her Instagram is at one funny mama. So we even took half her name for our podcast, two funny mamas. So uh, y'all, Real Housewife of Potomac's Karen Huger is not letting age stop her. 60 years old and she looks amazing. So Karen let it all out while she was on Watch What Happens Live. Now she gave legs. She was wearing short, velvet short shorts and a blazer. Oh my God, and, and let me tell you something. Let me tell you why I'm mad. I'm mad at Karen Huger, cause they don't let me wear nothing like this <laughs> on the talk show. I asked Willie Sinclair the third from the Milwaukee Sinclairs, can I wear those shorts? And he's like, no, it's gonna slide up. It's gonna slide off. You on the talk show. And I want, I need somebody to get this picture, print it out and send it to, I need a big 11 by 14 matted. And I want you to send it to Willie Sinclair cause Karen Huger wore it on Watch What Happens. I, I don't understand why I can't wear it on the day I'm on talk show. It's friggin' Karen Huger doing it. But let me tell you, uh, clap if you feel it's inappropriate for Karen Huger to wear. You, you want to clap? It's okay. Ain't nobody gonna be mad at you if you want to clap. It's, it's okay. Now clap if you think Karen's gonna do your thing. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> we are all, we are all entitled to our opinion. Now for me, I love the look on Karen, but people did criticize her for dressing too young. And somebody commented on Instagram. They said, I know, <laughs> oh man, I know this old lady isn't dressing like this. It actually makes her look older because she's trying too hard. Classless for an old lady to dress like this. Another said, Karen, remember you are supposed to be classy. Just because they make it in your size doesn't mean you should wear it. I think that's where you're coming from right here. Now these are the same, <laughs> and I was looking at these comments. I said, these are the same people be on my Instagram page. <laughs> Making the same dang on comments. First of all, you need to stop saying the little ones. You need to stop saying old lady. You call her auntie, but she's not old lady. She's very vibrant. She's accomplished. She's, you know, okay. The old is subjective. Now, I feel like, you know, yes, people are saying, you know, just because they make it in that size doesn't mean you should wear it. But I'm going, you know what? Karen Huger, she's got her tone thighs. She worked hard for her tone thighs. She, Karen Huger, she's not hurting anybody. Like, she's not, she's, her thighs are not causing, because she wore these short shorts, they're not causing World War Wars. They're not causing, they're not stopping you from picking up your kids from preschool. Like, <laughs> and all the, Karen Huger is married to an older man. So she got to keep it spicy for him, okay? 
Uh, so somebody out there is titillated by Karen's thighs, okay? And it's not the people who complain it. They're not titillated by Karen, but she, she is working out. She is looking good. She's like, I got it. I'm going to flaunt it. And somebody out there is loving those thighs, all right? <laughs> somebody is loving what Karen is doing. Somebody look, hit my workout. Somebody hit the workout. Somebody loving. <laughs> When I do, somebody is titillated by the thighs. Every time I post my workout videos, and I do it to inspire people to say, you can do this. You can, if you, you know, take charge of your health. But there's always this one lady who gets on me and she goes, enough already of you showing your butt. Enough already. Use your brain, Sherry. And she'll go, use your brain and show what, what God purposed for you. And I'm just always like, lady, get off of me and my ass. I like, like you know how hard This lady is always getting, do you understand? I came from a place, I didn't have a booty. The comics used to make, all these comics used to make fun of me because they would go, they would call me, you know, with T and A, they would call me T, T and T, that's it. Because I had no butt and everybody, and so for me working out and I built this butt in the gym, I show, I love it. It's so important. And I use my brain as well. But I think with Karen Huger, there are more important things in the world to care about. Karen, you know, and I want to say, Karen, you look really good. I don't know what it looked like when you sat down, girl. But my birthday is coming up, Karen, so I would love for you to send me that outfit, and I'm going to try to talk Willie to let me wear it on the show. <laughs> oh, and this is what I'm excited about. I'm so excited about Oscar and Emmy winner Regina King is headed back to our screens. Oh, yes, she is. Regina is playing Shirley Chisholm. Oh my goodness. She's playing, and Shirley Chisholm was the first black woman elected to the US Congress. A lot of people don't know this too. Shirley Chisholm was also the first black woman to make a serious run for president. A lot of folks don't know that. So Regina's movie is about our 1972 presidential campaign, and we got a sneak look. Take a peek. I have something I want to tell you. I am running for president. Of the United States? <laughs> Holy. I'm paving the road for a lot of other people looking like me to get elected. Brooklyn's first black representative. You're about to make history. You want to be president? You ain't no man. Maybe we should find your mother. All you got is your one vote. You sound just like every other politician. Do I look like every other politician? <laughs> First of all, to see my sister back, uh, I'm so excited. But I feel like I'm gonna be in that movie theater, John, going, mm, mm, <laughs> just doing this with my hands. And I'm not gonna say Oscar nomination, because every time I say it, something go very, very wrong. But I'm just gonna say, something gonna happen at these award shows <laughs> for Regina King. That's what I'm gonna say. So Shirley is out on Netflix, and we all gonna be in front of it March 22nd to see Regina King. <laughs> Y'all, we got a great show for you today. Because up next, we are chatting with actress Gina Rodriguez. And I'm so excited. I can't wait for her to come down. All right, y'all. We'll be right back. Sherry, we'll be right back. is a Golden Globe winning actress who stole our hearts. I love this series in Jane the Virgin. Now she is making us laugh as an accident prone reporter in her hit series, Not Dead Yet. Please welcome Gina Rodriguez! <laughs> I'm so excited. 
excited you were here. Same. I am such a fan. You have me rolling every day. I love it. And you, thank yeah. you very much. Too good. Too good. And I rolled at you every day because I love Jane the Virgin. I loved you on the show. Thank and you. I, yes. Thank you. And I'm excited that you're here because, you know, being busy, you got your show, but you're also a busy mom. So I it's can't. hard getting out there. Your son, Charlie, just oh. turned one. Oh. One years old. Okay, now. In he's the, backstage. He's backstage. I didn't get to see him. I got to go. Auntie got to give him a kiss yes. kiss. Yes. All right, being a mother, your mother of a boy, how is motherhood so far? Oh, it's the best thing in the entire world. Yes. If I had known I was going to love it this morning, I mean, obviously I knew I was going to love it, but I didn't know I was going to be like, obsessed, like yes. deeply and strongly. They say, you know, it's all cliche, like you've never known a love like this. Yes. Oh my God, it's visceral, mm -hmm. it's it's intense. And so if I had known, I would have started a lot earlier. <laughs> like, and I would have had like 10. I know, girl. Yes. Uh, well, I don't know, I was with you until you said 10. That's a <laughs> lot, but. But I understand, like when I looked at Jeffrey for the first time, oh. I, I, I understood how God loves us. And I went, oh, now you, you really me love me. Like, he loves you oh. like that. Okay. Oh my Don't, goodness. Okay, keep your lashes I know, on. I know. Keep your lashes on. Don't push you right off. I just understand that feeling. You got yeah. your boy, but like his first birthday party, oh. Gina, you had this massive oh. birthday for your son, Charlie. Yes. Like, why was it so big for his first birthday? Well, you know, it was like his first wedding. It was for me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I needed this strongly. You know, it was crazy because when we were celebrating it last year, that same week, we were in the NICU. Mm. And that was. That's a hard one. Ooh, it is such a hard yes. one because you, like you said, you're like, you feel this emotion of what a gift. I, I could not believe life could exceed this potential of emotion and feeling. Mm -hmm. And then you're just like, come on, little dude. Like, Make it. you got this little dude. I know. And you know what's crazy is, you know, you talk about relationships and trust. I always thought that I was going to have to give to let him trust me, mm -hmm. right? And somehow he taught me how to trust him. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm and like, I'm this, telling you, oh, when song. I tell you about boys, you will be his big, you will be the number one woman in his life. I'm telling you this. And when Please I have my son's- Promise part, me this. Yeah, I promise you. <laughs> well, yeah, but when they, get, when they get 18, they're gonna be like, okay, enough already. But uh, you still will be the first woman. Yeah. So I understand it. And I'm looking at Charlie, who's gorgeous. I'm looking at your husband, who is gorgeous. <laughs> you know I had to get on this husband. I, I did not- <laughs> Your husband, Joe, is an MMA fighter. He All is. right. He but is. you the tough one, Gina. Oh, my God, because, I, you know, when I first started dating him, I thought, like, oh, that's right, I got a protector. Uh -huh. You know, like, this man is going to protect me. I'm going to be like, get him. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and I'll never forget it. We started dating. Four months in, we went to Thailand to do okay. a Muay Thai camp for a month, which was already crazy. Like, why was I going to go out <laughs> to another country with a man that I just met four months prior? But we clearly fell in love, but yes. there, you know, there's like a lot of moving parts. It's like very busy. We're in Phuket, we're right in the city. And this guy is pushing his uh, food cart, right? right? We're in like a food cart area, food market. And he pushes the cart and it like rumbles over like my foot and he kind of gets stuck on it. And I was like, hey, oh my God, it's my foot. Like, you're my foot, you're my foot. And he was like, get out of the way. And I know, and I was like, oh. I was like, but this is my foot and that's your card. I get it, but like, you're on my foot still, uh -huh. you know? And so I was kind of like helping him push off my foot. And then I was like, Joe, come on. Like, uh, you're the MMA. Yeah, I was yeah. Like, do it. And he was like, no, peace, baby. Oh, because they're about peace. All about peace. He's all about peace and love. And like, all, he was like, no, in the martial arts, it's like, we do not use our, our strength to hurt anyone. Uh, you, I wish you would have known that before we started dating. No, I was like, yeah. <laughs> it's like so. about peace. So he like helped the man get the cart off my foot and he was like, oh, have a great day, sir. And I was like, I broke my toe. <laughs> I was like, come on. <laughs> but <laughs> he's calmed me down. Okay, he has he's calmed, calmed you down. down. Yeah. Now, uh, I didn't, people loved you on, on Jane the Virgin. I loved you on Jane the Virgin. <laughs> I, this right here was my picture. It's so funny because the show ended five years ago. I am. But like, would you be willing to revisit that role if it if the opportunity came up? In a heartbeat. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. That was such a beautiful family. And it was such a magical show because it was just so different. Mm -hmm. It was so different. And like you Nothing lived in this crazy world and it was surreal and campy, but then it was like grounded in like heartfelt love. And so I would go back and uh, yeah. Oh, I would love to see you back. I mean, I'm not dead yet is great, but 
Jane the Virgin, maybe do it in like, your, uh, uh, you know, part time. I don't know, but I would love to see it again. I want to congratulate you because you're on season two now yes. of Not Dead Yet. Yes, yes. Oh my gosh. And I love Not Dead Yet because, and you're so funny in it because your character now, you see ghosts all the time. Yeah. So like, do you experience that in real life, ghosts? I mean, I'm Latina. I feel like there are ghosts around me all the time. <laughs> but uh, no, I um. I had this really profound experience when I was living in New York back after college and I was like hustling and trying to like, you know, book jobs and theater, et cetera. And I was going on this theater audition. My un my favorite uncle had passed away while I was, oh, I grew up in Chicago. Okay. And so when I was in New York, he passed away. He lived across the street and he was just the best, Theo Jose. He was just the greatest. Yeah. And when he passed away, my parents didn't tell me because they didn't want me to get sad. Okay. Which was also like a problem when I should talk to them about that. That was, <laughs> that was not cool. Uh -huh. but, um, but I go to this audition and I'm climbing the stairs because there's too many people at the elevator and I remember just like, it's like stairs landing, stairs landing, stairs landing. Right. And I get to like the fourth floor and there's like a man in the corner like leaned up against the wall and I like look up and it's my Theo Jose. And I was like, <gasps> and I just was like so shook and he just, he just went like this, like towards the stairs. And I was like, oh. And I just put my head down and kept climbing the stairs, climbing right. the stairs. And I got to the top and I was like, whoa, whoa. That was like, I'm getting goosebumps now. I was like, oh whoa, my gosh. that is wild. And um, I went, I auditioned, I got the role. And you got the part. I got the part. My oh Theo Jose was with me. I know. My Theo Jose was with me. Um, and uh, yeah, and my grandmother passed away two years ago, and I swear she's in my house. She's and she comes too. Oh, I just feel like she's always in my house, and I'm always like, Grandma, I can't see you. I love you so much, but I'm just Girl, too postpartum for this. I Gina, can't. I can't. You get all these ghosts. I've been asking my mama to come back for the longest. <laughs> she never. I don't think she forgave me for taking her car when I was 16. She never comes back. I always <laughs> ask her. Okay, I gotta get. I gotta get with you. Ask Tia Jose if she could okay, talk to my I'll dog, on Laverne Shepard. Okay. Laverne Shepard. Okay. If he could get her to just come visit me in my dream, maybe I could book something. Something. But you, <laughs> you know, another thing that I love you in is you are in, you are so amazing in rom-coms. Like, we love you in the rom-coms because you had your movie, which went number one, debuted number one, called Players. Yes. And it was on Netflix, number one. Can you tell us about it? Yes, so it is a group of friends. Um, it is this woman, I play this woman named Mac, and she is surrounded by her, her best friends. And it's really her and these three boys that she went to college with. Uh -huh. And then Liza Koshy, who ends up being a part of the crew later on in the film. But she, they run plays. They run plays to like hook up. They run plays right. to get, you know, to get a partner. And now you're meeting them at a time where they're done playing games. And okay. games is not getting them any further. And they're just, they want to start having real relationships. So they play mm -hmm. a game for keeps and it doesn't really go the way that she's hoping. This and, is good. Yeah. Everything that a rom-com is made of. Yes, yes. Gina, I know you got to get back to Charlie because he is <laughs> up there like, where is my mama? <laughs> I want to thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Y'all, you have got See not dead yet. This she is so funny, Gina. It airs Wednesday nights on ABC and it streams the next day on Hulu. And Players is streaming now on Netflix. So you can get a whole weekend of Gina. <laughs> Y'all. Up next, just kidding. Gina Rodriguez. <laughs>funny viral kid moments. Now, first up is a little girl who has an interesting medical diagnosis for her doll. Take a look. My ears hurt, doctor. Can you help me? Um, yeah, sure. I can help you. Can we have long glasses to see them? Mm-hmm. Okay, turn around. Oh, my God. You got cavities? You got cavities in it? <laughs> you have cavities? Does she have tatty teeth? <laughs> Hello, don't laugh. It's not funny. It's not funny. Not funny. Be quiet. <laughs> okay. Okay. Does she have tatty teeth in it? No, baby. What she having in it? Earwax. Earwax? Let me see. <laughs> oh my god, earwax. I didn't know you could get diabetes in your ear. I 
I sure hope they got a pill for that. <laughs> now, the dad in this next video gets a taste of teenager sass from his two-year-old. Let's see it. You don't talk to me that way. I don't care. Oh, my gosh. What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something, Dad. If this attitude is starting this young, you better watch out for those gray hairs because they will be coming in gray sooner than you think. <laughs> Now, the boy in this next video won't let a baby gate get in the way of his freedom. <laughs> Me think that somebody is spiking his formula with protein powder, okay? <laughs> And finally, this next video demonstrates what happens when you bring a bored toddler to a golf course. <laughs> Rebecca, Rebecca, Rebecca! <laughs> 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 okay. Well, think about how much worse this could have been if she got a hold of the clubs, all right? <laughs> if you have a photo or video of a kid doing something funny, send it to SherryShowTV.com. <laughs> Up next, Tamala Jones is here. <laughs> yeah. Sherry will be right back. Next guest in classic films like The Wood and hit TV shows like Castle. Now, her new movie, Ordinary Angels, is inspired by a true story. Please welcome Tamala Jones. I got my shoe. I had a shoe. Did the shoe come off? Okay, well, that's okay. Leave it at the door. I'll take them, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so once you take the shoes off, they are mine. Oh, my God. You know, it's so funny because I haven't seen you in so long. And this take, looking at you takes me back to when we did our movie together, Who's Your Caddy? Who's your and we did Who's Your Caddy? <laughs> We were in Aiken, South Carolina for about a month together. Yes. Like, Tamala, did you have as much fun as I did making that movie? I did. <laughs> you guys, oh my God, you were amazing and so it funny. Was Terry Crews and, and Big, Big Boy and Faze on Faze Love. on Love. Yes. Uh, Andy Melanonkis. Yes. It was great. Yeah, we had a good time. <laughs> Boy, we did some stuff in the streets, you and we I. Did. Okay. No, good stuff. Good, good stuff. stuff. Good no, stuff in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, I, it's funny because I was reading this, and I did not know this, that your career started after your mom had a chance meeting with Tisha Campbell's mother. That is correct. Really? What happened? So, uh, I always wanted to be an actress. I saw Lark, Lark Voorhees from Saved by the Bell was yeah. in my class in the sixth grade, and in the following year, Jaleel White comes to my school, and I'm like, Mommy. Okay. I gotta do this. Um, so my family had a catering business and there was this man who was like, yeah, I love you guys' food. I'm gonna look out for you. He told House Party to call us and hire us and replace the old caterers. So I went down to that set. Okay. I wanted to meet Kid and Play. I wanted to meet Tisha Campbell because I had watched her on uh, this show on ABC called Rags to Riches. Yes. And big fan, Little uh -huh. Shop of Horrors. So I met her and Tisha was so nice, as yeah. you know. Yes, she is. Very kind spirit. And my mom ended up chit chatting it up with her. And Mona said, Hey, Roxy, you wanna do this? This is the steps you take. We took those steps. And I'm here. And here you are. <laughs> See? 
This is what I love about women supporting women. Yes. Always. That you're giving her her flowers. Yeah. You know, um, it, I have never seen you as a teenager until I was following you and you had posted a flashback of yourself from your teen years, <laughs> Tamla. Okay, and here's the so funny, what's so funny, you look so cute, but you said so young and so nerdy. I love it. Nerds run a uh, rule. Respect my nerdiness. Respect now you didn't use you didn't use nerd six times. <laughs> what kind of nerd were you? Listen, I, I'm still a nerd. I'm really? very much of an introvert, unless I'm going to work or vacation. Oh. I don't come out that house. <laughs> um, <laughs> I like science. I'm very much into science. I'm a gamer. I love playing Mortal Kombat. I, I do things that nobody thinks I would do. Uh -huh. um, and I'm very sporty, you know? Yeah. I like to go and get my knees scraped up doing something adventurous, zip lining through the jungle. <laughs> okay. I'm so, this is so fascinating to me because when we was in the street, she wasn't a nerd. I'm just saying that. Oh, no. Not a nerd at all. I had to put, put my, you know, my zhuzh on and be what Hollywood needs you to be while you're out, you know? Okay. <laughs> now, you had posted another, uh, you had posted another picture, but I want to congratulate you because I don't see nerd, you, you, and everything you described is not a nerd. You just very intelligent, uh, <laughs> a woman, the stuff that you like. Well, thank you. Not a nerd. <laughs> thank you. Now, you just turned 50 this year, and I'm going 50. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, you t I'm turning, You're turning 50, 50 this year. Okay. <laughs> you are turning 50 this year. Yes. Let me tell you something. 50 is the new, I don't know, fill in the blank, because I go 50 where? You look uh, absolutely amazing, girl. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. And I was saying pictures because you are rocking Ooh. at 50. <laughs> this is why I got a breast job. Mine look just like this. I look, when I saw those, I was like, that's what my boobs look like. I love it. Now, you look so fly in this picture. Uh, I don't know where the nerd, I don't know, I guess you couldn't fit the nerdiness in that uh, bikini top. But uh, the, first of all, girl, are the, are the guys just constantly, the little young ones just constantly on you? Honey, I don't come out. Nobody's constantly on me. What? No, I'm in the house. Not in right there. In well, the house. That, that, that's at, in someone's backyard. That's, you know, <laughs> that's at somebody else's house. Okay, so you're on social media. Do you see the young ones sliding in your DMs? They're very respectful, though. They're respectful. They're respectful. They're like, you know, if you can let me shoot my shot, I'd like to take you out to dinner if you come to town, to my side of town, or you come to my city. It's cute. They're respectful. They Can are. we get some freak of the weeks to get it? Uh, <laughs> That's all nice and good. We need, okay. We got to get some freaks of the weeks to get the nerd this out. <laughs> but I, I want to say, in, in all seriousness, I, congratulations on your film, Ordinary Angels. Thank you. Because Ordinary Thank Angels you. is based on real events. Can you yes. tell us about that? This movie is definitely based on a true story. It's about the Schmidt family. Uh, Ed Schmidt had just lost his wife to a rare liver disease and only to find out his daughter has the same rare liver disease. Mm -hmm. And I play Rose, who's the best friend of Sharon, played by Hilary Swank. She's got issues, like okay. we all do. Mm -hmm. um, she's an alcoholic, so I become concerned with her. But at the time, same time, she's like, yeah, I need to fix myself. She reads this story and it inspires her to want to help this family. And what I love about this movie is it is a beautiful love story, but it has absolutely nothing to do with romance. Mmm, it's a different kind of love. It's a different kind of love. I love it. And I want to shout out um, your producers, Andy and John Irwin. Who Be love you, I'm they're, sorry. They, and I have to say, because they produced a movie and directed a movie that I was in uh, called Woodlawn. Okay. And they're two of the most wonderful <laughs> gentlemen I love. But this is what I love about Ordinary Angels. It's about love but you are raising money for a very great cause. Yes. Can you tell us about that? So any families that had to, any or organ donor situation, mm -hmm. we know the bills are skyrocket yeah. from just from watching the movie and from other stories we've heard. So what we're doing, if you can, you can go to ordinaryangels.movie. We just need $1 from you. We turn Ooh. $1 into yeah. $100. We've already raised a lot of money and our goal is $10 million. We want to pay those bills off for anyone That's what in it that is. situation. And the thing about giving, 
People think, you know, oh, it's only a dollar, but one dollar and one dollar and more one dollars gets up to $10 million. That's so right. everybody can make a difference yes. for the ordinary angels. <laughs> you better go on, nerd girl. <laughs> I love you. You better go ahead. Tamala, thank you for coming. Thank you. And you gotta come back, because we got some streets to hang out in, girl. I wow. will hang out. I, but I wanted to do if a shameless shout out, if that's all right. Okay, what's the shout out? I found out that I have a cousin, Matthew Law. All right. He's in the new J-Lo movie. Okay. Um, He's beautiful. Oh. I just met him. I did. I wasn't raised with him, y'all. So what? 2019, I met him. Mama was like, "No, that's okay. your cousin." Oh, okay. <laughs> so don't don't date him. But Matthew Law, come on, cousin. Come on, cousin. Auntie over here waiting for you. She ain't no nerd. All right, y'all. Ordinary Angels is in theaters everywhere on February 23rd. We'll be right back. Tamala. <laughs> We'll be right back. I am so excited because this Friday is the finale of my Funny Over 50 contest. And after hundreds of submissions, it's down to our two finalists, Gina Nicole Brown and Juanita Lolita Mills. Now, our all-star panel of judges will be Judy Gold, Rolanda Watts, and our special guest judge, my bestie Kim Whitley. The winner is gonna be featured in my Laugh Lounge later this season, plus they're gonna perform in at least one of my pretty funny entire comedy shows. Make sure you tune in this Friday because you don't want to miss it. We'll be right back. <laughs> We'll be right back. Come and be a part of my studio audience. Go to SherryShowTV.com for tickets. We'll be right back. <laughs> Sherry, we'll be right back. Tomorrow, Wyclef Jean will be here, so join us then for the best time in daytime. Bye-bye. <laughs>